Good evening, Dr. Phil here. In this session, we will discuss factors which affect MAC and MAC derivatives. Factors which affect MAC Factors that increase MAC include reduced age, pyrexia, increased central neurotransmitter levels such as that induced by sympathoadrenal stimulation, ephedrine, acute amphetamine intoxication, acute cocaine intoxication, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, levodopa, etc. Tyrotoxicosis, chronic alcohol ingestion, melanocortin-1 receptor MCR1 gene mutation, hypernatremia, and Alzheimer's disease. Factors which reduce MAC include increased age, sedative drugs, IV anesthetic agents, analgesics, nitrous oxide, decreased central neurotransmitter levels such as that caused by alpha metadopa, rizapine, chronic amphetamine exposure, chronic cocaine exposure. Alpha-2 agonists such as clonidine and presidex can reduce MAC. Other factors that reduce MAC include pancuronium, lithium, physostigmine and neostigmine at 10 times clinical dose, acute ethanol intoxication, lidocaine, verapamil, higher atmospheric pressure, hypotension, hypothermia, hypothyroidism, pregnancy, hypercarbia, hypoxia, hyponatremia, hypoosmolality, anemia, and patients with depressed level of consciousness, such as due to cerebrovascular insults such as traumatic brain injury. Mechanisms of how these factors affect MAC No single mechanism explains these alterations. This supports the view that anesthesia is the net result of numerous and widely varying physiologic alterations. Generally, factors that increase MAC increases CNS metabolic activity, increases neurotransmission and CNS neurotransmitter levels, and cause upregulated CNS responses to chronically depressed neurotransmitter levels. And factors that decrease MAC reduces CNS metabolic activity, reduces neurotransmission and CNS neurotransmitter levels, and cause downregulated CNS responses to chronically elevated neurotransmitter levels. The following does not affect MAC, the duration of anesthesia, gender, acidemia or alkalemia, type of surgical stimulation, hyperkalemia, magnesium levels, obesity, and some sources quote thyroid function, hypo or hypercarbia. H. The following equation has enabled the plotting of charts to guide clinical practice that outlines equipotent concentrations of volatile anesthetics adjusted for H and concurrent nitrous oxide use. MACH equals MAC 40 times 10 to the power of negative 0.00269 times H minus 40, where MACH is the MAC at a given H and MAC 40 is the MAC value at H 40. This figure charts the H-adjusted iso-minimum alveolar concentration lines for desflurane. It shows the effect of increasing H on the concentration of desflurane required to achieve escalating MAC equivalence from 0.6 MAC to 1.6 MAC. Nikaus and Maplesen have produced similar charts for all commonly used inhaled agents. A linear model describes a change in MAC of approximately 6% decrease per decade of H, 22% decrease in MAC from age 40 to 80 years, and 27% decrease in MAC from age 1 to 40 years. Body temperature Variations in body temperature is associated with differences in anesthetic requirements. Increased body temperature results in increased MAC, and reduced body temperature results in decrease in MAC. Animal studies have demonstrated a positive linear relationship between temperature and anesthetic requirements. A murine model demonstrated that for body temperatures of 32 to 37 degrees Celsius, a decrease by 1 degree Celsius results in 5% decrease in MAC for isofluorine. The net effect of temperature on MAC is hypothesized to be attributed to effects of changes in body temperature on cerebral oxygen consumption. Genetics The melanocortin-1 receptor gene, MCR1 gene, mutation has been associated with increased requirements for volatile anesthetic agents or increased MAC. Patients with this mutation are red-haired females with freckles, 
they may have altered pain thresholds and perhaps this explains the 19% increase in MAC compared with dark-haired females. MAC varies in relationship to genotype and chromosomal substitution shown in rat experiments. Regarding serum sodium, hypernatremia causes increase in MAC and hyponatremia results in decrease in MAC. Regarding obesity, a recent animal study modeling human metabolic syndrome demonstrated no difference in MAC comparing obese subjects with non-obese subjects. Pharmacological factors Drugs that potentiate or activate GABA-A receptors such as benzodiazepines, propofol and barbiturates reduces MAC. Non-GABAergic drugs such as NMDA receptor antagonist ketamine and alpha-2 adrenergic receptor agonist such as clonidine and dexmethadomidine reduces MAC. Opioids reduces MAC. Through their nociceptive actions, potent opioid analgesics might help to prevent movement in response to surgical stimulation. However, opioids may not profoundly decrease the concentration of volatile anesthetic required to achieve amnesia. Drugs that increase catecholamine release in the CNS, such as cocaine acute intoxication, increases MAC. However, chronic exposure to cocaine reduces MAC. Acute intoxication of amphetamine increases MAC and chronic exposure to amphetamine reduces MAC. Acute intoxication of ethanol reduces MAC, and chronic exposure to ethanol increases MAC. Pathological factors. Patients with depressed level of consciousness, such as due to cerebrovascular insults, such as traumatic brain injury, generally have reduced MAC. For neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease, a murine model of Alzheimer's disease demonstrated that the neuropathology associated with Alzheimer's disease confers a resistance to the hypnotic actions of inhaled anesthetic agents. Next, we move on to MAC derivatives. MAC unawake is defined as the alveolar concentration of volatile anesthetic at which 50% of patients remain responsive to verbal commands when anesthetic concentration is increased, i.e., the induction pathway. The range for MAC unawake is 0.4 to 0.5 MAC evidence. Various studies have shown that a shift in EEG dominance to the anterior leads, that is the shift from self-aware to non-self-aware, accompanies loss of consciousness. In primates, the EEG shift and loss of consciousness occur at 0.5 MAC. In dogs, Loss of consciousness accompanies a sudden non-linear fall in cerebral metabolic rate at about 0.5 mac. Most patients receiving only 50% nitrous oxide, which approximates 0.4 to 0.5 mac, have no recall of their procedure during nitrous oxide administration. Mac awake. This is defined as the alveolar concentration of volatile anesthetic at which 50% of patients remain unresponsive to verbal commands when the anesthetic concentration decreases, i.e. the emergence pathway. MAC awake has been suggested to be the minimum alveolar concentration required to prevent awareness during anesthesia, however this is disputed. MAC awake is determined by averaging anesthetic concentrations in research participants that just permitted and that just prevented a positive response during recovery from general anesthesia where a positive response is an appropriate voluntary response, such as eye-opening to verbal command, which indicates the presence of consciousness. The range for MAC awake is 0.15 to 0.5 MAC. MAC awake is often presented as a ratio of MAC awake to MAC. Generally, this ratio is 0.3 to 0.5 for commonly used volatile agents. This table shows the MAC and MAC awake values for selected inhalational anesthetic agents for 40-year-old human volunteers, breathing the agent and oxygen. For halotane, MAC is 0.76, MAC awake is 0.41, and MAC awake to MAC is 0.55. For isoflurane, MAC is 1.15, MAC awake is 0.49, and MAC awake to MAC ratio is 0.38. For sevoflurane, MAC is 2, MAC awake is 0.62 and MAC awake to MAC ratio is 0.34. For desflurane, MAC is 6, MAC awake is 2.5, MAC awake is 0.5, MAC awake to MAC ratio is 0.5. For 
and MAC awake to MAC ratio is 0.34. For nitrous oxide, MAC is 105, MAC awake is 68, and MAC awake to MAC ratio is 0.64. Values expressed here is as percentage at 1 atmosphere absolute. Limitations of MAC awake The MAC at which one both loses and regains consciousness is different. Hysteresis between the induction and emergence pathway exists, which is based on anecdotal experience with patients, theoretical models, and murine and fruit fly data. Neural inertia is defined as the intrinsic resistance to state transitions, such as the induction of or emergence from general anesthesia. According to murine and fruit fly data, the concentration of anesthetic required to achieve unresponsiveness or immobility at induction is often much higher and maybe two to three times higher than the concentration of anesthetic at which mice or fruit flies start to respond or move at emergence. There is also greater variability in responsiveness to anesthetic concentration for emergence than for induction. Neurobiological substrates of induction of or emergence from general anesthesia are distinct. Hysteresis between going under and coming out of anesthesia is not simply a matter of pharmacokinetics. The anesthetic concentration at which consciousness is lost in humans is likely higher than the anesthetic concentration at which they will regain consciousness, i.e. MAC unawake is higher than MAC awake. This gap between MAC unawake and MAC awake in anesthetic patients could provide a safety cushion against accidental awareness during general anesthesia. Intense noxious stimulation could shift the MAC awake and MAC amnesia curves. Wakefulness and memory consolidation could occur at higher than expected concentrations of volatile anesthetic agents. Thus, pain from noxious stimuli during general anesthesia should be minimized with appropriate supplementary analgesic techniques, such as regional blocks and multimodal analgesics. In conclusion, anesthetic concentration predicts loss of responsiveness more reliably than recovery of responsiveness. MAC awake studies have been conducted amongst volunteers who were not exposed to noxious stimuli. Unresponsiveness does not always indicate unconsciousness. Anesthetic concentrations at MAC awake during surgical stimulation does not mean that 50% of patients are unconscious. Patients may only be unresponsive in the absence of noxious stimulation. MAC bar, where bar stands for blocks adrenergic response is defined as the minimum alveolar concentration of an inhalational anesthetic agent at which increase in heart rate or blood pressure or both, which are autonomic responses provoked by a standard skin incision, is prevented in 50% of subjects. MAC-BAR is an estimate at best, as autonomic blockade can be accomplished to varying extents, i.e. there is a lack of precision of the outcome measure. MAC bar has been approximated at 50% higher than standard MAC. MAC for tracheal stimulation or reflex pupillary dilatation has been investigated and these have the same limitations as MAC BAR in relation to the lack of precision of the outcome measure. MAC amnesia. This is defined as the anesthetic concentration required to suppress recollection of a noxious stimulus in 50% of patients. Memory can be categorized as explicit or conscious memory and implicit unconscious memory. Explicit memory is the conscious, intentional recollection of factual information, previous experiences and concepts, and can be divided into episodic memory and semantic memory. Episodic memory refers to the memory of events or experiences, and semantic memory refers to the memory of factual information. Implicit memory is memory that is acquired and used unconsciously and can affect thoughts and behaviors, such as priming, perceptual learning, category learning, emotional learning, and procedural learning. Episodic memory of surgical or procedural events is associated with post-traumatic stress disorder. Thus, the primary goal of anesthetics with regards to memory is to suppress explicit episodic memory of surgical or procedural events. Subhypnotic doses of anesthetic agents, whether inhaled or intravenous, 
often prevents consolidation of episodic memories. Studies have demonstrated that the alveolar concentration of volatile anesthetics at which amnesia is achieved is lower than MAC. It is possible that patients who are occasionally aware and have untoward experiences during surgery will not remember intraoperative experiences at anesthetic concentrations exceeding MAC amnesia. In rodent studies, they have found that MAC amnesia ranges from 0.06 to 0.3. Interpatient variability for MAC amnesia exists. The concentration required to prevent explicit recall varies substantially among volatile anesthetic agents in human and animal studies. The concentration required to prevent the recall of painful stimulation may be substantially higher than that required for the verbal stimulus often used in studies investigating amnesic potency. Amnesic potency of inhaled anesthetic agents in rodent studies found that amnesic potency followed the mayer overtone relationship where nitrous oxide was the most potent amnesic agent relative to its MAC and halothane was the least potent amnesic agent relative to its MAC. However, in human studies, nitrous oxide was found to be far less potent at suppressing memory than isoflurane. These are my references. Thank you.